Nice, good job. You can do some over here. You can kind of see like those lines. Thank you so much, Emma. Good job. You're going to do this one right here. Right there. Nice. Okay, perfect. You want to just put that one on there? Good job, good job. Oh, my gosh. Alrighty. Uh, I think we've got two more. So, do you want to? Okay, cool. Do you want to clip this one in here? See the finishing touches there. Alright, and I'll put you on my face. Cool. So, that was really easy and that was really quick. It took a little bit longer because we got everyone to come on up and help us. But now what we're going to do is put the ends of our poles, which look like little feet over here. See how they look different from the rest of the pole? They go into these little tiny holes at the end of our tent. The little metal holes. They're called grommets. There's two of them. So that if one of them rips out, we have another one there. That's a really important thing in camping. It's called, it's called redundancy. It's having more than one way of doing things so that if something goes wrong and you're not 20 minutes from the grocery store, 20 minutes from Walmart, you can fix it or there's a chance to fix things. Um, but yeah, so now that we've got those little holes and the end of our poles over there, all we're going to do is, this is going to be the adults doing this on your actual camping trip, is kind of just push this up. And hey, would you look at that? We have a tent. So that was super quick and super easy. So this is a two-person tent. It can fit two fully grown adults sleeping side by side. Um, it looks a little bit small. It is for two people who know each other very well, is the joke I like to make. Um, but you can get four-person tents. You can get six-person tents. You can get eight-person tents. You can get 20-person tents. Um, you can also get tents that are a little bit taller, because this one I can't stand up in, Liam can't stand up in, Laura can't stand up in, but maybe one or two of you guys could probably stand up in. Uh, but there are, other, um, there are other sizes of tents, other heights of tents. Um, about where you can get tents is you can get tents at MEC. They are our sponsor for the summer. That's Mountain Equipment Company. They have really, really good, high-quality stuff. Uh, that is going to last you 50 years. I can say this personally. I'm not 50, but my dad is, and I still use his equipment. Uh, I have his tent from Boy Scout days. I have his sleeping bag from Boy Scout days, and I used it just this summer, actually. Kept me warm, kept me dry. Uh, but they're not exactly budget-friendly. Um, I think a two-person tent like this, new, is running $270 right now. They, they have end-of-season sales going on just about now where you can get things 40 and 50% off if you're lucky. Um, so this would be a great tent. It's not really going to do a lot to stop water. So this is a second oh, part of our tent, tent, or the third part of our tent. This is called the rain fly. It's like the rain jacket of your tent. It basically goes rain. over your tent like a blanket, uh, and it attaches in the almost the exact same way that your poles do. So you've got these little metal poles at the end of tags here, and it just goes right underneath your pole and clips right in the same way. Um, what you might want to do is you might want to tighten this after you've gotten everything secured. There's these little um, pull tabs down here. This is to make sure that this doesn't touch the body of your tent as much as possible because uh, if it's really, really cold outside and you're really, really warm and insulated inside your tent, you're going to get water condensation pooling up under here. And if it's touching the body of your tent, that might like go through the mesh and get on you. So you can pull these tight to make sure that water doesn't touch you and you can pull these out. We'll show you that in just a second. The legs, uh, like we said earlier, tents are really light, they're really nice, they move easily, but you don't wanna come back from a hike and find your tent up in a tree. <laughs> that sucks. Um, so this is to prevent that from happening. What this basically does is attaches your tent to the ground in a way that's really easy to remove. So all you have to do is take four of these at all the corners of the tent and you just put it in one of these tags here. Nice orange tag down here. You put it in at a 45 degree angle. So just kind of like halfway between straight up. Um, and you put it in about two to three inches into the ground. You don't, this part doesn't have to touch dirt for it to work. It just needs to be solidly in there. You can use your foot, you can use your hand, you can use a rock to really get this in here. But that's another reason we do it at 45 degrees, because it's a little bit easier to put it in at an angle than to just put it straight down. But you just keep going like that. Do one, two, three, four. And you get basically a cute little place to store your shoes right under here. That's still going to be dry. Like, it's still going to be dry. There's no water going to get on it. But it's not inside your actual tent here. So yeah, speaking of things that go in our tent, what should we put in our tent, Laura? Well, 
we have a couple things here we can put into our tent. We have got a sleeping mat and a sleeping bag. Has anyone ever used a sleeping mat or sleeping bag? Yeah, so they're pretty cool. They're pretty handy. Now, when you go into camping, you don't always need a sleeping mat. It really depends on what your preferences are, what your needs are, and what you're just comfortable with doing. Like for example, I personally use a air mattress that I just am able to blow up and put in my tent because it's big enough, and then I'm a lot more comfortable than I would be on a sleeping mat. But some people don't even want a sleeping mat, and they're totally fine with sleeping on the ground. But this is just nice to have. If you want to see a little more comfort, but maybe you don't have a sleeping bag, not a sleeping bag, a sleeping mat, or you find for going camping. This is something you should shop for in person, because its sizing can change a lot depending on the uh, bag. So if I bought this off of Amazon, I might not know that this is a perfect fit for me. But if I tried buying one of these off Amazon for my friend Laura here, it would probably be too no, long of a bag. bag. <laughs> So make sure that you're getting a sleeping bag that's a good fit. This is something where you can ask the people at MEC, and they'll be able to point you in a direction for you know how much space you want in the sleeping bag, how cold you want it to be, and uh, just the general sizing. Yeah, the, re the, the main reason you don't really want it to be super big is because then it won't keep you as warm. But if you have lots of extra blankets, obviously that can be helpful, but it's just good to try to get one that fits you well.